Okay, this is the third video in the series on the photoelectric effect and this is going to explain stopping voltage. So looking at the photoelectric cell circuit here now, we've set it up so that we've got violet light with a wavelength of 400 nanometers at a light intensity of 50%. Uh, so we have got electrons being emitted from the cathode, travelling across the anode and we're showing a current down here of 0 0.071 amps. At the moment the battery in this circuit here is set at zero volts so it's having no effect on the electrons being emitted from the uh, cathode of the photocell here. What we want to do though with this battery is to set it up so that the voltage from the battery is going to be opposing the flow of electrons and if we can set it up just right we can get the voltage down here so that it just stops the electrons being emitted from being able to reach the anode. So in order to do that, we want the negative electrons to be pushed away from this plate. So as two negatives repel, we're going to connect the battery so that we've got a negative voltage at this terminal here. So I'm just going to type in a negative value there. So let's start off with negative 0.2 of a volt. And there we go. So if we watch at the moment, the, that's not having that much effect on the movement of the electrons. So let's increase that slightly to negative 0.5 volts. And now you can start to see some effect. You can see that now we've got uh, a negative plate here that it's starting to repel some of the electrons and they're moving back towards the collector. Um, at the moment though, there are still some electrons getting through. So that shows you that the electrons that are emitted, they have a range of kinetic energies. Um, we're looking at the most energetic electrons, and at the moment the most energetic electrons are still being able to get through to the anode and flow in the circuit. So we have reduced the current slightly, but not quite got it down to zero amps yet. So we need to increase the voltage, so negative 0.6. Still some electrons getting through to the anode there, go to 0.7, still some electrons being able to pass through there, so again keep increasing that, and if we get to 0 0.8, you can see now the current reading down here is zero, and if we look closely there are no longer any electrons able to pass from the cathode to the anode, they're all being repelled, even the most energetic electrons. So now what that means is that this stopping voltage here, this value of voltage, is giving us an idea of the kinetic energy of the electrons. So voltage and energy are closely linked. Voltage is um, the energy per coulomb of charge. And so we can make a link between the voltage that we see and the energy of the electrons. Um, if we wanted the electrons to be able to still pass to the anode, a couple of things we can do, either take away the stopping voltage, or if we were to think about how the um, electrons here are getting their energy, if we go up to the light and we change the frequency of light that is shining onto that plate, if we go for a higher frequency, therefore a shorter wavelength, so let's try 350 nanometers into that, that will give us light with a higher frequency. A higher frequency means more energy per photon for the light. And we can see here that now means that the electrons are being released and there are electrons with more kinetic energy. So our stopping voltage down here of 0 0.8 volts is no longer enough to stop those electrons passing to the anode. And again, we have a current flow. So in this case, we'd have to increase the voltage in order to get to a stage where none of the electrons can pass through to the anode. Okay. So the stopping voltage is linked to the frequency of light that is shining onto the metal.